are listening to Out of the Box Podcast with Rosie Tran. Out of the Box is sponsored by HugMeTees.com. Spread love, give a hug, HugMeTees.com. Guys, I am so excited to announce I will be at the LA PodFest on September 19th at 7 p.m. Tickets are $59. If you can't make it down to the Sofitel Hotel in Beverly Hills, um, you can check us out at LAPodFest.com. There's a live stream feed and it is $25, but you get $5 off with coupon code ROSIE. That is coupon code ROSIE, R-O-S-I-E. That's my name. And check it out at LAPodFest.com. And as always, we are on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. So I'm here today with Kenny Styles. Kenny is a former adult film star. Is that correct, Kenny? Yeah, that's, that's me. <laughs> and now you are doing activism work and other things over in Thailand. Um, so you have a very interesting story. You actually um, grew up uh, being the child of a sex worker. Is that correct? Yeah, my, my mom was um, a sex worker out here in Thailand. Um, and then I, I, I grew up actually in the UK. That explains the sexy accent. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, I went over there when I was two. um, And, um, you know, I guess, yeah, your mom's your mom. So it's like you don't really get to know all the details until you're a bit older. And um, and so I guess, yeah, it's it's always been a part of my life. Mm -hmm. now did that influence you getting into the adult film industry at all or no no not really I mean um it's funny as the years go by you look back and you think to yourself you know like how the apple doesn't fall far from the tree this that kind of things but actually like most of my um career choices have just sort of happened organically for me in my life path so um perhaps the Perhaps some of the liberal attitudes of of sex work um, and and coming to accept just really just what it is um, can, probably can, does come from my mom. I'm not sure if um, I didn't I didn't grow up with my mom, so mm-hmm. she didn't you know we didn't have that much of she didn't have that much influence in my choices and in, in life and stuff. But yeah, perhaps so. But you're, now you're doing activism to bring awareness and help a lot of women in Southeast Asia. I mean, do you think that's connected at all? Or how did you get involved with that type of work? <laughs> um, it it's actually came, came by accident. Um, <clears throat> we've been involved uh, for a few years with Earth and Building in the U.S. And we, we got in to know a lot of um, people in, on, in the woofing community. I don't know, I don't know if you aware of um, worldwide organ, um, organic farming opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when we came out here to, to, to build our first earthen project and, um, and we were looking at a lot of things about perhaps bringing some woofers out here and, you know, every, a lot of people had expressed interest in coming out here to help with the earth and building. And so that was the original plan. Um, and the idea is to build a, a small farming community up here in the north of Thailand. But um, yeah, I have um, it, also in my childhood, I, I was in foster care and children's homes. So mm-hmm. I have a lot of personal experience with that. And um, so we got, we got involved with talking to some of the charities out here who work with rescue uh, rescuing uh, child sex sex workers, um, and you know that just really hit a, hit a chord with me, and um, it, it just seemed like it was it was a perfect opportunity. A lot of the people that we've met through woofing and stuff, they would come out here um, to teach English or or just to learn earthen and sustainability um, stuff, and. We just figured that what we could do is partner up with these charities and provide accommodation um, and obviously food. It's going to be an organic farm. Um, so accommodation, food, and ed- and education. Um, so the, so we had a lot of really positive feedback. And then um, basically people were like ready to 
come and um, check out the the land and everything. And at the moment, it's literally like we've just been we spent a lot a lot of time clearing the land, just being with the land. Um, we have some friends who do dowsing work, and so I've been researching stuff like that. And we we're really at just ground roots level. Um, we've just started clearing um, the footings of our first building, which is going to be the communal um, eating hall. So, um, yeah, so we've got a while to go until we can actually, you know, do some actual, um, well, play our part in, in providing, um, uh, you know, a loving environment to, to, to help these girls deal with what, what's going on. It's not, it's not anything to do with my, my past per se, it, but it, but it is, there is definitely a call inside me to, to help those who have been, um, taken advantage of in, mm-hmm. in this situation. So, yeah, well, Kenny, I don't want to get all me. spiritual on you here, but it sounds <laughs> like you keep saying this is a coincidence. It sounds like there's some type of grand, um, design going on here because you know you're saying well it was a coincidence i got into the adult film industry it's a coincidence that i'm helping these young girls in sex trafficking but um if anything it sounds like you're absolutely the perfect person to do all of this because of your history and your background regardless of whether you grew up with your mom or not it's it sounds like there's some kind of puppetry going on from up above (laughs) to me (laughs) (laughs) well you know i you you have to with regards to spirituality and and finding your your path you, you know really listening in to to your own intuition and and um yeah perhaps perhaps i don't see it so much as puppetry as as as, as much as just really tuning in with in, with what your heart's desires are and and allowing that to come through um in, in your actions Paying attention to well, you know, like I said, with coincidences, let's say, um, you know, I we use this language, this very limited language, really, uh, just to communicate our points. But what, for me, a coincidence is such a gift because it truly is. For me, uh, it it st- it stands out so far above anything else. It's like something that really points to me, like bang, that's the direction I'm going in. It, you know, it feels. That's that's what I'm going to do. There's no questions about it. And and usually, um, well, thankfully, I've been I've been really fortunate in in knowing which way to go with my life. And I'm someone who kind of jumps in two footed with everything. So it's um, it's fortunate that um, I'm landing on my feet quite often nowadays. <laughs> I'm just saying it doesn't sound like a coincidence at all. It sounds like everything that you're doing is. So, so to speak, in your uh, genetic makeup, I mean, for the better. Um, it's, you know, you sound like someone who has been dealt not the best hand and is turning it as far as if you looked at your story from a traditional point of view saying, well, I was in foster care, this happened, this happened. But it sounds like you're turning that script around to bring a lot of positivity and good um, to your an area that you're, you know, connected with. Yeah, um yeah, I think that's something that happens as we, as we wake up to our, you know, to our old, sort of our soul desire. We, we, um, I think that generally most people they find what it is that they love to do, or they find what it is that they're being drawn to do, and and more often than not, I I believe that once once you start feeling that it's it's for the good of the whole, um, that's that's truly for me where a lot of, uh, I don't know, for want of a better word, like magical things start happening. You know, um, mm. these these synchronicities, uh, these coincidences, they just keep like just presenting themselves to you. And it's in it, for me anyway. Personally, I've just been really enjoying just the not knowing of, <laughs> not, <laughs> you know, not knowing what, how it's going to unfold. But but in in a sense, that makes it more of an enjoyable journey that's it, it makes the ride more um exciting to me and i and i guess i i use that as a as a guidance as well you know the, what feels good my, my compass kind of just goes with what, what really lights me up in in that moment so so yeah i um 
I, I, if it's a divine plan or if, you know, <laughs> if, uh, if we're being guided by, by perhaps more than what we see in our day to day lives, then that can only be a good thing. I, I think. Um, so you've retired uh, or semi-retired from the adult film industry. <laughs> I'm not sure no, which one. No, 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 no. Um, I, I really don't. I don't know why I don't. I just. You don't like saying the word retired. <laughs> yeah, it's just like it's so. I, I feel like I, pro- I've just evolved. I've progressed. I, I, I quite often have this back and forth with uh, people on social media about um, my stance and where I'm at and. Well, uh, I wanted to talk fact, about that stance, is, which yeah, is why I brought it, it up, because we talked a little bit earlier on social media and you said, well, you know, I don't, re- you know, I'm here helping these these girls and these sex workers in Thailand, but I don't necessarily want to badmouth the um, adult film industry because there's a lot of positive aspects of it. So I just wanted to delve into that a little bit. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so this is this is where a lot of I, f- I find in my life that, that I'm always presenting with a lot of um what seemingly from the outside are, are contradictive sort of, um, you know, uh, activities that I'm involved in. And, and, and one of them being that, um, so we're out here in Thailand, um, being kind of more recognizable, it's, it's I, I really would, would have liked to be involved with the operations where they're, they're going in, at, into the bars and actually, um, like pulling the girls out, you know. That, that's Are you somewhat of a celebrity in Thailand? Uh, well, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess maybe. Um, so you're pretty recognizable for for the for the re- for reasons that are not necessarily like what I I would like to be known for, you know. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, but you know, they, they, there's a lot of Thai males who are proud of me being Thai and and all the nationality um, side of things, but. But yeah, regardless of that, I, I, I would like to be more involved with with that. But a lot of people have have mentioned to me, you know, because of my position with in the Western world, especially with porn and and being sort of uh, a sex um, uh, personality, um, that I could use my my platform more much more effectively by speaking out against pornography and. But then, obviously, that goes against my my inner feelings about. Um, I I truly believe that you know porn could could provide and does provide in some cases, you know, a positive um, medium for for people to discuss and open up subjects about sexuality. Mm. But at the same time, there's so many hardline people in in the activism and the sex trafficking and side of things anti-sex trafficking side of things who really are like like focusing in and honing down on what creates the 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 clientele what you know where does this clientele come from why do they specifically come to the far east um to because because of the accessibility of underage sex workers or even um you know or even sex workers in general um, where where does that behavior come from? And also um, the the actual personal accounts of sex worker sex worker male and female actually um, in in Thailand a lot of the a lot of their more negative stories they do revolve around um, quite abusive or quite violent um, sexual themes and and so where does that come from? And the majority of the con- clientele are from the Western world. Mm. So, so what is it in the Western world that is fueling th- this kind of, um, ex- you know, expression, sexual expression? And um, and so a lot of their eyes are looking to porn. And and I find myself as well agreeing a, a lot of the cases, you know, uh, and it's humbling to me as well because. No, no matter how I how I felt that I presented myself in the industry throughout my career, um, you know, you can break it down. You can break it down. Obviously, I never really was into the BDSM and the domination or the, the violent stuff. stuff. Yeah. However, when I first started out in the business, um, perhaps because of my physique or my tattoos or whatever, I was typecast into that genre, 
uh, quite often. <laughs> okay. And I was doing pissing. You just had that and... badass look, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was doing like domination and and BDSM and and I was doing a lot of that stuff in the beginning. But then, you know, as I found my feet in the industry and I, I, I you know, asserted myself and my preferences much more clearly, I moved away from that. But I still have that in my in my past and I still have that in HD on uh, tube sites all over the internet. So, <laughs> okay. it, so it's, on the outside, it seems like such a contradiction that, oh, this guy, you know, you know, I'm, I even on my, on my Twitter account was just opening conversations to people about like jizzing in women's faces. You know, this is <laughs> such a, it, it's such a, uh, a clear and common finale to any sort of porno porno sex scene is that the girl's going to be down on her knees and the guy's going to be like spunking all over her face and to me like having done that on almost you know I'd say 90% of the scenes of however hundred many scenes I've done um that to me is in a, in a sense um I've accepted it but it is also a a sign of disrespect to me now. I see it as, but what if, and, and it does carry on. Sorry. What, what if it's both, you know, you're saying you have this dichotomy, you feel very split because on one side, you're part, you were part or are part of this industry that may be fueling exploitative behavior. And now on the mm-hmm. other side, you're fighting for the rights of these women. But what if it's both? What if pornography does have a place for people to explore their sexuality and in, in, in a safe environment and maybe um, learn about themselves and it's Absolutely. exploitative and there's a space to save and rescue and help these exploited girls. And maybe it's not one or the other. It's kind of, it's not a dichotomy. It's, it's just a little bit in the middle. Right. Well, I mean, here we go with this is that, you know, I I've come to, through my own spiritual past, I've came to this sort of stance where I, I, I truly, within me, seek to honor all paths. And, and so in that, I, I really have come to, whenever there's a choice of one or the other, I always just say both. It's, it's both. Yes. It is both. However, the, the, there is, you know, that's, that's all well and good. However, when we actually look at the trends, when we look at what, you know the amount of content that is available um, on either side, you know the 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 more negative representation of sexuality is far outweighing mm. anything that that is encouraging people. I mean, I'm not saying that people want to watch porn to be educated or want to watch porn to. Um, I mean, ideally for me, I'm not, I'm right up on the other other end right now because I'm so involved with tantra and and you know sacred union. So I'm I'm I would love to make porn that encourage people to seek a spiritual experience out of like tantric and Taoist practices. But that's so far down the other end, far away <laughs> from like. You know, it might not be as far as you think. Well, let's hope so. Um, <laughs> I, I just believe that um, without the support of the other performers, without the support of the companies who already have mass distribution, uh, it, it is an uphill struggle because um, getting this, uh, you know, I, I, I did my, whilst I was still very active in Los Angeles, I did my very best to just be like, okay, when the condom law ca- came in, I was one of the few male performers anyway that was like publicly and openly like yeah I mean of course I'd love to put a condom on go to work have way more safe and confidence in coming home clean Um, but then when that came out um, then I was just like well I was in the middle of my spiritual practices I was um, doing a a lot a lot of Taoist uh, research and and I, I was actually like, I don't want to do, I don't want to do facials anymore. And then the the backlash I had just from saying that, um, and essentially now like wanting to encourage men to to learn how to um, become fully in control of their bodies physically, um, 
and to retain their seed. <laughs> um, it, it, it's not the it's not the direction that porn is going in. It's, well, it's not what they want to do. I guess what I'm saying is maybe let's use a metaphor of the healthcare industry. Mm. So many doctors I've met in the healthcare industry genuinely want to help people, but because the healthcare industry is currently so corrupt. Uh, with pharmaceutical companies and other yeah. things like that, it's hard for them to do their job. So healthcare in itself is not an evil thing. It's just that it needs yeah. to be reformed. So Absolutely. what I'm hearing you say and what I'm in alignment of what you're saying is that the pornography industry in itself may not be inherently negative, but right. the direction that it's been going is not as empowering as you'd like it to be. Is that what right. I'm hearing? Absolutely. Yes. You know, absolutely. And 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 I've said... I've said time and time again to people that I, I see more and more female directors. I see more and more, um, you know, influence coming in from from not just from the performer level, but from production and direction. Um, you know, up to up to um, you know website owner managers and owners who are uh, you know a female team who. Uh, and I'm just trying to stay away from that sort of cliche of the that porn for women thing because I'm not I'm not necessarily saying everything's got to be like that, but I definitely think that as more women are involved with producing porn, that that these at least these ideas would be more open. Well, um, believe it or not, I've actually heard a lot of men, including my friend who is a, a former porn producer, mm. saying that the industry is going a little bit. Um, I don't know if extreme is the right word, but it's, you know, I, I think actually extreme is the right word. You know, he was saying, he's like, why does it always have to be, you know, kicking some girl's face in and saying she's mm -hmm. a slut? Why can't it be? I guess what he was saying was that he enjoyed seeing women enjoying themselves. And mm -hmm. he felt that some of the physical and violence and some of the pornography was getting to be a bit much. And he's a por former porn producer. Right. And yeah, um, it's getting out of hand. It's getting I mean, a bit it has extreme. Been for a long time. Yeah, uh, it's getting I a bit like. extreme. I mean, I came from four years of performing in Europe before I even stepped foot in the States. And um, I guess Europe has this uh, <laughs> reputation for being like the more harder, harder toned stuff. And, and, and it's like it's been this way for a, a long time. And, it, and it's very, you know, um, it's very, like I said before, it's, it outweighs what I would pro probably describe as, um, you know, porn positive content. Or which is what you per content. which is what you like, and you want to promote that. Yeah, I want to promote it. I mean, but at the same time, like we said before, with it's both. It's like I'm not saying that those people who are into, uh, you know, kinky sex or BDSM. I'm not saying that they're, they're they're the devil. I'm just saying <laughs> okay. that you know, like. <laughs> If we could have more of a balanced um, representation, then then, no, I, then, I, that, then there I think porn has a has a positive. I totally uh, understand what you're saying. Yeah, it it presents something positive to to society. So, but then going back, um, like way back to the other side of the Pacific, out here, um, you know, it's I'm you see the result of those people who have become infatuated and obsessed with. Um, the hardcore stuff, whether it be, you know, forced, well, forceful sex mm -hmm. or even, you know, there's this whole, there's this whole rape porn now, there's this, um, and there's just very abusive behavior that's, that's, it manifests in the, the other end of the scale is the clientele that we're working with who are using um, these services with, especially with the underage, it, it's like it's it's a very 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 vast um, spectrum, I guess, that we're dealing with. And and I'm not saying that porn, um, you know, the the first thing that porn people and porn performers say to me is that you can't blame that on porn. But then at the same time, we got so many titles out there, and we've got so many like, uh, uh you know, from from 18 to the to early 30s girls who go to set who have been told to bring with them stuff and they're going to dress up as a schoolgirl or you know put the pigtails in and it's you know uh don't worry it's my stepdad or you know all of these 
sort of incest related or underage implied um, porn movies that are being produced and they're being produced shielded by by this sort of free speech um, you know uh, this you know, fantasy like, it's just a like, fantasy it's, it's not real yeah yeah so at some point we have to sort of accept responsibility responsibility for our, our participation in it so it's not so much like I, I really I'm not even focusing now on the big money making corporations because they're just going to do what works for them but you know for me and especially with um, you know we just have this um, adult performers association that sprouted out in in LA and I think that's a really good thing but I feel like going into and educating performers and just saying hey look if you're if you think this is kinky and and you want to do it then great but if you're just doing it for the paycheck and you're not really thinking about the you know the representation that you're giving or the or the ideas that you you're providing to the viewers then you know take a deeper look at what you're doing you know um and and for the guys too it's there's so so many fewer guys who are in regular employment in the industry and it's just like it to me as a as a male performer i think it would it would be so powerful to to have the guys on board and just be like listen there's not going to be violent sex if you ain't doing it. So <laughs> That's fuck, true. Fuck whatever the director says, if you don't want to do it, if you don't want to slap the girl up or you don't, you don't want to pull up uh, orifices open and, and, and treat her like dirt, then don't do it. If it doesn't make you feel good, don't do it. But again, uh, now we're dealing with more of the psychology and the influence of not just porn, but just like mainstream media as well and just um sort of the well you you hear these stories about the you know the frat house um culture yes. that goes on and, and it's just like it it's it's deep it's way deeper than just trying to tell your mates on the porn set hey you know do you really need to do that do you need do you need to do that but that her, is or? important because that is also the similar type of behavior that we want to encourage in this frat house culture you know, it's there have been many studies proven that if you see, you know, another fraternity brother or college brother um, bullying a woman or having rape like behavior, trying to get her trash to rape her, that if you just say, hey, dude, that's not cool. That is a very, very effective uh, rape prevention technique, because um, only I think the statistic I'm not being 100 percent accurate is that only 10 percent of men are doing these predatory behaviors, the majority of men are actually good guys. And a lot right. of men give into peer pressure and think, you know, especially at that young age in your early 20s, you know, um, late teens, that that's the acceptable macho behavior. But in reality, you know, if you have five guys, four to five guys are extremely uncomfortable with that. Yeah, oh, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And then at the same time, you know, that it's, it, to me, I see the situation is it's stacked against them because it's it's again we can see we can look at porn and we can look at this instant gratification. Um, I don't know this porn culture, this this um, hyper sexualized desire to like jerk off all the time. <laughs> okay. and, and it, it, it's it's just ta it's taken advantage of really just of, of the hormonal, you know progression of of growing up you know and it's yeah. it's targeting uh, a very influ um susceptible age group uh, and then the, but the thing is they carry on with these tendencies whether you know porn addiction carries on into their adult lives into their professional lives into their married lives and you know that's that's the sort of that's the mass that you don't hear about them because they don't come forward because it's embarrassing. But you don't hear these stories about people who are in their homes um, jerking off to porn just to get hard, and then and and all of these impotence, you know, erectile dysfunction or even um, premature ejaculation, all of these male sexual diseases, dysfunctions. Yeah. That all comes back to what I'm talking about with <laughs> wanting to help educate men how to become more in control of their bodies, you know, to, to look into Tantra, to look into, um, 
to look into the, 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 the truth of multi-orgasmic sexual experiences, but how More many multi-orgasmic... Absolutely. And how many multi-orgasmic experience, male experiences are depicted in any porn that you've ever seen? You know, it, it's, it's not real. It, people laugh at me still when I try, when I, you know, when I'm telling them about the joys, the bliss that can be experienced through having a, you know, a sacred union, a spiritual experience through sex. Um, and it's really empowering and it's really, you know, even just a taste of that is enough to, to, to say to yourself, you know what, perhaps I'm going to, you know, I'm going to seek this and, and my partner's going to enjoy this even more because, you know, with, with the female orgasm, like how many women do we hear about who 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 aren't even experiencing the or, orgasmic pleasure in 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 on their own or or even in you know penetrative sex or sex with their partners? And then when you talk about multi-orgasmic experiences, they're like dumbfounded. You go to the you go to Santa Santa Barbara or or wherever, and you go to these tantric circles, and you have got so many women there who are there because they've never experienced sexual bliss. They've never had an, had an orgasm. So they're there, but they're there like right at the bottom of the level. And I'm just trying to say that, okay, this is the doorway and absolutely find yourself sexually. But on the other end of the scale, you could be blasting off, you know, <laughs> and having some really out-of-body experiences through sex. And it's one of the most powerful direct routes then, you know, it's not years of meditation. It's not going off into the mountains. It's not uh, becoming a yoga, putting your heels behind your head or anything. You, you know, this is really simple and easy, but it's a doorway to spirituality and it's an awakening for so many people. But It is, and I think that what you're talking about is, like I said, more of a mind-body-spirit connection. And a lot mm. of people are looking at sex on a very basic almost animal level, which is the very base, lowest level yeah. way to look at sexuality. Yeah, yeah. They're just looking you know, at it at let me bust a nut, let me just get off yeah. for the male point of view or for women, let me just please my guy. And they're not understanding that the human body is a holistic thing and there is psychology, men mental sexuality, e you know, emotional arousal, mm. all sorts of different layers of sexuality, not just, you know... Um, jerking off or whatever yeah, um i think you're exactly right there you know when we talk about it we talk about root chakra and we talk about this sort of this sexual energy the 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 engine of of our survival or even yeah we come up to the second and we're talking about survival and and it's just like it's been kept very much in the lower lower vibrations lower experiences and then what else do we what do we do or what the what did the porn industry do they were like well, instead of taking it higher up into the heart or up into sort, you know, you know, more intimate connection, instead we're going to divert ourselves with other things. And then the 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 very real aspect of BDSM is that yeah, pain and pleasure. They, you know, they in the brain, you know, science can even tell us, you know, the, it is a very it, it's a very similar, you know, experience um, feeling. But why do we have to go with the pain? Why it's do we a very be... similar electrical stimulation because <laughs> we, we're made of energy um, mm. and electrical energy. Actually, that's one of the basic um, things that you learn if you're in med school is that the human body is a conduit right. for energy. And um, I think what you're talking about is you're talking about something that's very profound because usually when people think of sex, especially because of many uh, traditional, I'm using quotes, religious institutions have taught that sex is bad or sex is just for procreation. And right. what you're talking about is very profound because actually, if you think about what sex really is, it is the creation of life itself or the right. seed of creating life itself. So why wouldn't absolutely. we be genetically programmed to experience it in a holistic way? Right? Right. Absolutely. You, you know, you're exactly right there. And, and, and so much more, you know, I mean, obviously the, I, I have this sort of, Pre, anytime someone says, "Oh, Kenny Stars," yeah, they're talking more about in the sex realms. But you know, like, and so much more. Like, if as you said, we're, we're a conduit. Uh, it when you open yourself up to more living, more of a spiritual life, I just find that that it can happen through sex, but it can happen through so many other paths. But then, 
once you are sort of you're aligned with yourself with your being you have you you've dropped all of this um the religious dogmas or this societal shaming or and all of these things and you and you just own this this body that you're in and 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 the experiences that you can have through it and connecting with others um i just find that it it just opens up your whole perspective to so much more so much more than just sex or or even just tantric circles or just this or just that you know um, and I, I just like to make that distinction because you know especially here on this podcast we're about you know a little bit more than just busting a nut <laughs> Right. you're you're so much more than that so that's what I always tell my listeners I say you're so much more than that you know I believe that everyone is unlimited human potential I believe that everyone is you know even someone that you would think is a low life they have unlimited potential still inside them and they just haven't tapped into it so yeah. we want to be more than just busting a nut that's like lowest common denominator we want to be like you said have the key to the whole universe in, inside your body and, you know, maybe that sounds a little hippy dippy to some of the listeners, but as you've experienced it, you know <coughs> that we're actually so much more than that. Um, I want to talk about some of the work that you're doing and bring a little bit more awareness to that because I just am absolutely in adoration of you for, for that. Um, so what are some of the things that you're doing to help these these exploited girls? Well, yeah, I mean, so, so like I said, I, I'm not even – you must have been – uh, are we friends on Facebook? Because <laughs> I've been keeping this mostly. Um, I, I had I had opened up about it a bit. And we are then, not friends on Facebook, but we can become friends. <laughs> okay. right, so we'll do that. Um, you know, I I opened up about it uh, a few times. I don't know where. Um, I'm I'm pretty like honest about what I'm up to. Um, but but I had quite a lot of negative. Not negative. I just had a, quite backlash. a lot of backlash. We'll call it backlash, backlash about, <laughs> about what I was involved in, and so I, you know, I, I don't ever really like to delete anything I say or or anything. But you know, I found myself just just becoming a little bit more reserved about my involvement um, with the sex trafficking stuff here because um, because of your persona, because yeah, because of how others see me, and then also I um, I started looking into a little bit deeper into some of the charities that we've been communicating with. And I'm still, there's, there's a select, there's like three um, organizations who I, I truly, I believe are, are really doing good. Um, and then there's others who are perhaps, I just feel like um, having gotten to know them a little bit more, um, it looks more like those people who perhaps didn't want to go home or they wanted to <laughs> okay. make a career out of it here. Well, let's focus using... on, the, on the ones that are doing good stuff so that people yeah, can support so... them. What are the three main ones that you said are doing a lot of really good work? Um, well, Des Destiny, uh, Destiny is a, I think it's actually a, a global organization. Okay. Um, uh, but they have Destiny, Destiny Chiang Mai out here and they, they've been rescuing, um, they've, they've been focused on child sex work and sex trafficking. So they have been uh, rescuing girls, not just from Thailand, from, also from Laos and Cambodia and Malaysia. And they've been really focused on the, well, I mean, again, they, they have, um, they, they are, there is a financial thing. This is the thing for me is like, I'm kind of not, a, I don't want to be involved so much with this financial thing, but they are involved with, with getting, um, well, they have to do a donation system, but they are, they're more involved in getting this, this sponsorship kind of thing where they, they I, I don't know, they're getting sponsors from the West who, who are going to pay like a monthly, subscription kind of thing to to help support um the housing and and education of these these rescued victims the rehabilitation yeah and and obviously you know um that's an amazing thing because because essentially they're doing that now and so, and they they and they have sort of the, the everything set up to do that right away and and so they're they're affecting lives now which is much more than what i can say i'm doing but uh, again, um, I just inside me, I just feel like I can move. I can move away from this monet monetary thing because 
there's there's certain there's a lot of quite quite a quite a few in Thailand anyway. There's quite a few strange laws about uh, money and business, and you have to be a Thai. There's just a very there's quite a lot of red tape, and it and it's 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 quite a lot to jump through. So with me personally, with our community, what because we're we're doing earth and building because um, we're going to be farming our own land. Um, I, I'm I'm really trying to stay away from getting any outside financial backing or any sort of um, sponsorship sort of program going on so that we have the freedom and we have the independence to just be like, no, we, we, we're here as a, as a, uh, as a facility, you know, we can house and educate and feed um, these, these rescued victims, but we, we don't really want to be involved with the business side of it so much. Um, but, Again, getting back to Destiny, they they do have, um, they have like Destiny um, hair salon here in Chiang Mai. They have like, I think they have a restaurant or a craft, like a crafting. Are they putting uh, the girls to work there instead as a clean way yeah, to? Yeah, they are. Get off the and, streets. And that's and I and I do believe, you know, I, I in my heart really feels like that's that's great and it, and it's giving them tools at least that if they're. You know, perhaps when they're there working with Destiny, that they can take the, the, or they can, you know, band up together and then take their skills and go and be independent for themselves. Mm -hmm. However, I just, just sometimes I just feel like um, these, as these organizations grow bigger and bigger and bigger, they they just kind of, that it's much harder to to track and keep an eye on exactly what's going on here and exactly like, um, are you just taking them out of uh, a very dangerous situation and then put them in into some other kind of exploitive dis- position i'm not saying that with destiny at all but i'm saying that, that i've that's been the case with some of the organizations other, quite a few of the some yeah some of the other organizations that i've i've been in contact with so um again and and that's what immediately at, for me starting out like brand new that's what immediately kept me away from um wanting to go with the in that money route um there's there's also and 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 again it's just kind of like a lot of a lot of these girls are um i don't know that you know they it's such a terrible situation that they've just come out of it's it's kind of like it it's they they're so happy just to be out of that I think that they, you know, any other opportunity is is obviously a, a move up for their life. However, um, you know, some of these situations, I there, there's another organisation who originally I was contact uh, contacting them through Facebook, and they're they're here in Chiang Mai as well. But then I, um, and then one one of my first red flags was I'm not going to say the name of them, but one of my <laughs> first sort of flags was like oh. Then I went to their website and everything, and then I was like, "Oh, they're they're like a very, very." Um, they're, I, I'm really trying to avoid talking about religion, but they they are a Christian-based organization, and there's and there's nothing wrong with that specifically, other than that when I went more deeper into what they're doing, it was just like it was very, very like it was almost um, I don't know. It just felt like very, very forceful. That they could only really be there if they were if they were like ple- <laughs> on board with everything else that was going on with the with. So the, it sounds the like team. they weren't willing to help the girls unless they were willing to do the religious conversions yeah. that they wanted. They weren't there just to help the girls. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, yeah. And, okay. and so that's 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 quite that's quite common as well. We also met two other organisations who do that. So again, so talking about this with because I've been trying to focalize in on Northern Thailand and 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 then sort of coming down to to Bangkok and 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 just t- focusing on Thailand as my sort of first attempt now, here. What but is the name of not, your um your farm and your organization that you're building, Kenny? Oh, I don't even I I don't have a name. For okay, it. well we need to come up with one. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I mean we. <laughs> We're gonna do it right now. The Kenny Kenny Styles. <laughs> See, 
see, that's see, again. That's the thing. Is it's this dichotomy that we spoke about before. It's kind of like I I kind of would like to build it all and have it sort of in someone else's hands, as in the representation of of what we are. Because just simply because it's immediately people are are very judgmental about um, my involvement in the sex industry. They're very ju- judgmental about my background and, and this and that. Do you think that people think that you're out to do some type of exploitation yourself because you've been involved in the industry? That's been mentioned, actually. A couple of times it's been mentioned, um, you know, that perhaps uh, we couldn't... Uh, well, not a couple of times. There's, there, was one, there was one message interaction that I was having, and it, it was just like they didn't, they didn't think that, they, that we could um, partner together with, a, with anything because... Where, where we was talking about is that I I just want to provide the it, more like a children's home, you know. Like I want to provide the actual facility to house and feed and educate. Uh, I don't uh, and but the fact is they they weren't very interested in doing it and they were not for forthcoming with the information straight away. And I was just like, listen, this is I'm not asking anything from anybody. I'm just offering my services as I want to be a service. And um, again, it just came back to the whole thing of, well, you know, we, your involvement with pornography. And I'm like, oh, I'm not involved with it anymore. But then it, 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 it was implied that, you know, perhaps I would be, inter- you know, there's, I might have some motive to, to, take, <laughs> to take women out of the country and then take them to the States. And I don't know. That, I don't know whether they thought I would be putting it into, into prostitution or... Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of a lot of the anti, um, a lot of these organisations as well. They they link prostitution and pornography, and it, in in some senses, I I you know I don't have a leg to stand on in to, in defending that because it is so, it is so rife in in pornography and the bridge between pornography and pornography is just it's there. It's it's very obviously it's there. Um, how how what is the youngest girl that you have seen? or youngest child that you have seen in these type of situations? Because we hear about it in the West, but it's kind of like this vague thing that's swept under the rug, or we know that it happens in the West, but you know people don't really talk about it. And I don't want to go too dark and, and, and um, negative, but I, I would like to bring some of those statistics to light, or at least your personal uh, experience, to, so that okay. people understand. Well, you know, dealing with... Um, um, dealing with... Uh, Cosa, um, but that's not their that's not their website. But um, uh, Cosa Asia, uh, you can fr- you can find them um, on Twitter under Cosa Asia. Um, but they they've been they focus on child exploitation and you know the human trafficking and and at their facility, um, you know they have they have girls there from 11, 11 12, 13 who um who've been you know they've been working for for well there's a 13 year old got a 13 year old girl um bay who had been working already to two years for since two years so that would be 11 when she started so you're saying uh, that there's girls as young as 11 that are being forced into human trafficking sex slavery is that what i'm hearing yeah that's a that's and that's common that's a common story here yeah that's not not um and 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 it's getting i feel like thailand is really stepping up to the plate because of maybe perhaps because of their rep, we, the reputation in thailand but then some of the lesser known um or you know less notorious countries they really are um yeah it's a common story for the cambodian girls to have been working since 11 and 12 there's it's a common it's a common theme that girls who uh, who are virgins um, taken from the countryside uh, under the guise of you know going to work in the city as house cleaners or going to help earn money for the fa- family um, as waitresses or this and that um, then arrive in the city and bec- and are are very sought after and it, uh, it sounds like I'm attacking. Uh, the westerners but i'm just the sex tourists in general the sex tourists who will pay three and four times more to to have a girl that is uh to have an 
to hire a girl who is a virgin and then what they and then what they do when they're very young like that and inexperienced like that they it's it's there's I've also heard I haven't not directly to me but I've also heard stories about um where you know they they so they I don't know they they make some kind of imitation hymen situation mm-hmm. where yeah. they can keep selling the girl as a virgin and um but all of this stuff you know like like you said you, it, I don't want to go too deep into the dark stuff but the fact of the matter is in the western world we don't hear about it which is why I wanted you to real. You know, yeah, mention it so that we can bring awareness yeah, to it. This is absolutely real. This is absolutely happening. And and, and ag- again, like my heart, uh, I don't know. It just for the Thai people, but also for the, you know, yes, for the for the pride and love of my country and 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 Thai people, Thai culture in general. But just individually, these these women, these kids. It's just like that's that was enough for me to move away from offering opportunities to woofers mm-hmm. to just just focusing on like right I don't need to deal with people who want to just come out here and have a free holiday and do a couple of hours of work on the farm I want to teach you know I want to feed and teach these women how to speak English how to read and write how to empower themselves to just just have a you know, even just to have a normal life there's um what was i can't even remember what they call them but um there's there's girls as well some of the older girls well we say older but they're still under 18 like some of the girls like 15 16 17 who aren't in that bracket anymore in the uh, so they're not they don't look like children anymore mm-hmm. um you know if if they don't have good um english skills you know and they find themselves ended up in in some of the some of the conditions where they are servicing the local um johns um you know their conditions are even more worse and even more violent and it's just i i in, in a sense then you know you have i've i've and i've met other i, I guess sex tourists you know who who are come to thailand and they they they're very open about the fact you know that they will you know i hate this term but they will latch but every time they say it, it makes me cringe they say when i buy a girl for the night i'm just like oh you fucking asshole but <laughs> when you buy, i agree with you they, but they, it just made me laugh the way you said that <laughs> yeah they're very open about saying you know when i buy a girl i know that i'm helping her i know that she's um you know i'll give her a uh, a tip or whatever or, or or the money that I'm giving her is going to help support her family or her life and I'm helping her and if she was with a Thai client for example that they would be paying her half what I pay her and this and that and so then so then they they have this attitude of like they they're the hero this sort of hero attitude of like I'm here helping these women and you know I just it's it's palm palm to forehead over and over again because I'm just like I think it's a delusional way to yeah. convince themselves they're not the bad guys. Um yeah. Kenny, do you consider this a form of modern day slavery? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because but absolutely but not just not only on a physical level but on a psychological level and an economical level. It 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 to me it is it's um you know, to me, I I would even look at U.S. citizens as you know slaves too. You know, so uh, as you go up the chain, it's like how big, you know, pick your battles because how big do you want to go on the slavery? I think it's very important to say that because I hear so many people saying, "Oh, well, look how horrible we were back then." We when we mm. allowed slavery, I hear that so often from people. And there seems to be this pointing of fingers back in the past, back at look how we acted back then. And it seems to be a way to, I guess, it's a delusional way to not really understand that we're still doing it. And so, you know, I really don't like when people say, oh, look, well, you know, look how we allowed slavery back then. There's actually 
a lot of slavery going on now. And instead oh. of pointing, pointing, pointing the finger back in the past, I think that people get to get empowered to help what's going on right now and not say, look back then in the 1800s. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so Absolutely. Just, I you know. am glad that you said that. Um, I want to talk about, you know, obviously you were in the industry for a while have do do people especially some of your former colleagues in the adult film industry think kenny you've lost it <laughs> absolutely you know that but uh, you know I, that's something that in my life i've dealt with so many times in so many different sort of ways it's like when i stopped you know back when i people said i was crazy for leaving the army you know um i at the time at the time in the army i was getting four four full-time wages at the same time you know because i was doing my boxing I was in the army and I was getting uh, people said I was crazy but then I I had to explain to people like life isn't about money <laughs> life is not you, you know it's not just about how much you earn it's not about how many how much you have in the bank and then and then when I got into porn you know so many people were just like you know you living the dream man you you know you 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 get to have sex you get to meet all these beautiful women you get to fly around the world and all of these things and it's like when I walked away from that, I mean, I walked to, I walked out of L.A. on the same year that I got, I guess that would have been the peak of a male performer's career, you know, to win, uh, win, an, win the AVNs or an ex- Male performer or of the year, correct? Yeah, um, act, actor, actor of the year was, okay. was the thing, which was a, it's a joke, was a laugh to me because I was like, <laughs> Actor of the year is the opposite of what I was ever trying to do. I never stepped on set and tried to act. I, I wanted to, you know, represent a real interaction. That you know, I always wanted to just be real rather than this and that. So that was a big joke to me. I, I don't even know where that is. That's in a box. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. I wanted to sell it, send it to the director, but it was so heavy <laughs> that I was like, it's not worth the postal fees so it's just in a box in someone's house um i uh, but you know the, people said you're absolutely crazy you've lost the plot you smoke too much weed or you this and that and i'm just like what, what more do you want to you know what more it doesn't bother me anymore when people people's opinions about like i stopped eating meat they were like oh my god you're gonna die <laughs> What are you gonna do? Uh, I'm like, I've never been healthier and happier, and you know, um, it, and just cleaner in in my not just in my body, but in my in my thought process and my actions. You know, so actually, it when we look at how people project their opinions on you, and and in the most loving way, I'm getting much more better. You know, I used to be like really rough around the edges and very combat, um, you know, confrontational about things. But I, I feel like as as I've matured, I, I've come into my grace a little bit and been able to find a way to show them that what they're saying is just a reflection of where they are at now. You know, wh who they be. So when they when they say all of these things, it's just like, can you it's not a see? That you, yeah. that yeah, this is something that's within you that you're dealing with, and I'm I'm here because I'm still here as your friend, or I'm still here for you because I this is exactly what I went through, and and you know, and again, even when I take that stance, however uh, graceful or you know loving I, I want to be towards people, then I just get labelled with oh you think you're a guru or you think you you know your shit don't stink or you're so good or you're you're so perfect, and I'm just like, again, I'm just like, you know, uh, yes, yes, we are all perfect. We're perfectly where we are at. Well, Kenny, we have to wrap up, but it sounds like you've done a lot of healing, and I am really excited. You know, you've broken probably every stereotype in the book and every um, judgment in the book for the better. And I wish you so much success on your journey. It sounds like you are one of the good guys. You've given me some hope on this earth. <laughs> thank you, Rosie. You, you, you know, thank you for giving me the opportunity to chat with you about this. It's honestly, I did, I, I'm, I've been invited to do a couple of other things. And I think I'm going to get back to them and say, yeah, I'll do it. Because my experience with Rosie Tran was pretty good. <laughs> I, I feel like we had a good conversation and it was good. It was 
it's really um, you know it opens my mind up too to that actually there's people who are interested in these things. We and, are. And, I first yeah. tweeted at you and you said, oh, I don't know who would be interested in what I have to say. I'm like, <laughs> Kenny, you obviously don't know anything about my podcast because you're perfect. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, I'm going to listen in. I'm going to listen in for sure. Yeah, it's all, it's all about making a difference and it sounds like you are doing that. So thank you so much for your contribution and I will... Um, maybe if you could message me the name of some of those groups um, that are doing... The work that they're doing, I'll have it listed on the website. Right on. Okay. okay. Thank Thanks. you so much, Rosie. This has been Out of the Box Podcast with Rosie Tran. Check us out on iTunes, Stitcher, or SoundCloud. And of course, don't forget September 19th in Beverly Hills, California, we will be at LA PodFest. If you cannot make it, then go to LAPodFest.com and click on the live stream. It's $25, but $5 off with coupon code ROSIE. That is coupon code ROSIE. My name, R-O-S-I-E. And you will be able to catch not only Out of the Box, but all the podcasts that weekend. If you are able to make it to Beverly Hills, then we will be there. The tickets are $59 for the Saturday show, which I will be on. Um, as always, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, visit our sponsor, HugMeTease.com. And you can follow me on Twitter at FunnyRosie. This has been Out of the Box Podcast. Mm-hmm.